Hi, everyone. My name is Eric Coughlin. I'm an iPaaS product specialist here at Informatica. And today I'm going to talk about our CI CD DevOps capabilities within the Informatica data management cloud. So, agenda, we're going to talk about what type of integration we have with different types of Git repositories. We're going to talk about um, some enhancements that we've made recently to our uh, CI CD uh, REST APIs that are part of our, um, <clears throat> our API platform. And then we'll talk about how you can do DevOps and CI CD with GitHub and GitHub Actions. And we're actually going to do a demo showing you how we're able to do automated deployment and automated testing with GitHub and GitHub Actions with IDMC. So first up, as of February 2022, we support the following products um, self-hosted. So we support GitHub self-hosted, GitLab self-hosted, Bitbucket self-hosted, and any type of generic Git repo self-hosted. We also support, from a SaaS perspective, we support GitHub or Azure DevOps. Now, the way that works in <clears throat> from a cloud perspective, if we're connecting to GitHub SaaS, or to Azure DevOps, the Informatica cloud, without any additional configuration to your secure agent outside of your firewall, will communicate directly with GitHub or Azure DevOps to do your check in and check out. On the other side of things, if you do have an on premises Git environment, such as GitHub, Git, GitLab, or Bitbucket, we'll have to uh, enable a microservice on the secure agent that lets us communicate from the secure agent to your, uh, your code repository. And then we maintain a local Git repository uh, on the secure agent as well. Now, we support multiple types of branching with an IDMC. <clears throat> so if we were to talk it in generalities, if you only had one team working on um, <clears throat> a, a project with an IDMC, you could get away with having a development org, a test org, and a production. Each of those orgs would be tied to a different branch, and your code would move linearly through those environments. If you had multiple teams that were working on the same code, you could distribute that code throughout suborgs within um, <clears throat> a master org. So we could have a master development org, and if we had three different teams, each of the suborgs could be tied to a different branch. So just like in this picture where we have dev, dev2, and dev3 are all split into different branches. From there, you can have you can actually do the CI CD and, and, and push that up to a single UAT and then ultimately a single prod branch. Now, just like we're going to talk about a very simple scenario here. And again, we're going to talk about an environment where we have a development branch and development IDMC org, test IDMC org and test um, <clears throat> test branch in our in our code repository, and then prod branch with a production IACS org. Now the first thing that happens when someone checks code in to <clears throat> to IDMC is the org, assuming again, this is assuming that we're on premises, or uh, this is assuming that we're uh, in, in the cloud and we're doing SaaS, um, it actually goes and uh, it checks the code into the Git repository. If this were on-premises, this would be happening behind the firewall with the, with the microservice that I mentioned earlier. Now, you can configure, depending on what your code runner is, in this case, we're talking about GitHub Actions, you can configure a trigger to occur that when a check-in comes in, GitHub Actions, or if you're on-premises, something like Jenkins or GitLab, would receive that trigger and receive H1, which in this case would be the commit action. You could then tell it, uh, based on a YAML script, to act on that commit. So in this case, what we're going to do, <clears throat> we're actually going to make a call to the platform API, and we're going to actually uh, say, hey, for this particular commit hash, we want to get all the assets that are, that are associated with that particular commit hash. If it were three mappings, two mapping tasks, and an intelligent structure uh, design module, 
we could then recurse using the dependency API to determine what are the executable items that are associated with those objects. And that's going to be important for the next step. So in the next step, what we do is we find all those executable objects that are associated with the dependent items in the commit hash. And then we're going to use the uh, platform API v2 job to execute any mapping tasks or task flows that are associated with those artifacts. Assuming that the execution was successful, we'll send an email to the end user saying, hey, your, your code looks good. It's checked in. We ran, we ran a basic functional test on it. It works. If it failed, we'll send another email to that user saying, hey, it failed. And then um, we will then communicate that back to the pipeline. If it was successful and it, and it went back to the pipeline, then we're going to have an approval step, and we'll show this in the demo as well, where a lead developer or a DevOps resource would have to approve the, um, <clears throat> the, pull, the cherry pick commit from the dev to the test org, and then subsequently the pull into the test org. So once we have that approval from that particular user, <clears throat> The, either by an automated process or a, a DevOps resource would go into their Git environment and perform what we call a cherry pick commit. And that cherry pick commit would move the code from our development branch to our test branch. Once we have that in that branch, keep in mind that we are now moving code within the Git branch and not within the Informatica repository. Once that has been moved, we can then use another platform API called pull by commit hash. And again, we're going to use the commit hash from the previous slide, which was the cherry pick commit hash. And then we will pull the code from the UAT branch into the UAT or test board. Once that is successful, we're going to follow the steps that we followed earlier, where we're going to use the V2 jobs API to test the execution of that process and verify that it was successful, and then notify the lead developer and also the, the user, also the user that this was executed correctly. So we've walked through what the basic steps are, and now I'm going to show you exactly how we can configure this and, and what it's going to look like when you're, when you're doing a check. -in. So I'm going to log into my Informatica Cloud environment, and I'm logging in as a development user. And one thing I want to show you is the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click on the administrator chiclet here. And I'm going to show you in my settings where I configure at a org level. Again, I am at an org here, where I configure connectivity to a Git repository. So under settings, you'll see that there is a little pencil here. So you can see that I've enabled source control. I've allowed, I've, I've enabled allow push to get re, get repository. And again, I would only enable this in your development order. Um, generally, you don't want to allow commits in your test branches. So it's, that's not a great, uh, it's not a best practice. In this case, I've picked cloud, but you could click something on premises as well. I've given it my GitHub repository URL. And then I've told it what branch I want to use. In this case, what I've used is I've used a, 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 the Git OAuth application to allow OAuth access from Informatica Cloud to uh, my, my, Git, my SAS Git repository. Now, in addition to configuring your administration utility, you also have to, as an individual user, connect directly to Git when you log into Informatica. And the way you do that, and you'll have to have this set up for each of your users, is you go to your data integration chiclet. <clears throat> we'll let that load for just a second. We'll click up on the, the profile button or the user button on the top right-hand corner. And then we'll click on settings. And what you'll see here is that I have, from the administrator, I've inherited this Git repository. My branch is dev. And then I'm going, what I've specified here is that I'm going to use a personal access token that I've set up in GitHub ahead of time, where I give it my Git username, and then I provide it the personal access token that I generated from GitHub. Now, once I have that configured, when I do check-ins and check-outs, they will get attributed to this particular user rather than just an administrative user that's associated with the, with the org. So now we're going to go and actually affect the change. And we're just going to make a small change. 
So I'm going to go into my Informatica World folder. And I, you can see here that we've got these green arrows and they indicate that my assets are checked in. So I'm going to right click on my mapping task. I'm going to click on check out. And then I'm going to edit the mapping task by clicking on it and then hitting the edit button. So we're going to make a, a very small change, but a change nonetheless so that we can verify that our change moved to the next environment. You can see here that the maximum number of log files that I've enabled for this mapping task is 20. I'm going to set that to 33 and hit finish. I'll close this screen and I'll go back to my explorer. You can see that my, my mapping task is checked out by me. When something is checked out by me, no one else can edit it. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to check in. And I'm going to put a comment in here that says deploy. And the reason I'm putting that comment in is, is the, the YAML script that we built is only looking for commits that have deploy on them. That way, this makes it a little bit easier if someone's committing things on a regular basis and isn't ready to deploy. They can wait until they put deploy in the comment, and then it'll start the automated process. So we're going to say that we change the mapping task logs to 33, and we'll hit OK. And now, since we have that, I have my YAML script and my, my GitHub uh, environment set up to trigger my, my YAML script in, in GitHub Actions, we're going to go over to this browser here, and we are going to wait for the new pipeline to run. So we can see the new pipeline has started. The yellow indicates that it's, that it's been queued. So we'll click on this pipeline. And what's happening is, is we're running our first step. So they're deploying to develop. So I'm going to click on that so we can see what's happening. So we're actually calling the platform API to log into the uh, IDMC org. Once we've logged into the IDMC org, then we're going to use the V2 job API to execute the, uh, the mapping task. And if we wanted to, we could go into the um, <clears throat> IDMC platform. We can go to monitor, and we can see that that executed correctly. Wait for that. We'll just take a peek over here. It's still running. The API is still running. So what happens is, is once it calls the V2 job API, we have to do it's an asynchronous call. So we're querying on uh, in a loop essentially to see if it's successful or not using the uh, job status API. So we can see here now that. My job executed at 12.41 p.m., which is the time that it is right now, and it processed 132 records, and it was, it was successful. So if I go back here, in a second, it's going to get the status saying that it was successful. And now it's going to go and say, hey, in your YAML script, you've said that a lead developer has to approve the cherry pick commit and the pull. So we can see here that I have a step here that is in a waiting state. And when I click on that, it says, hey, reviewing, review, depending, uh, review pending deployment. So if I click on that, <clears throat> I can see that there are two administrative users, one of which is me, that have the approval to uh, de uh, allow this type of deployment. So I'm going to click on the UAT box. I'm going to say, I, Eric, approve of this deployment. I'm going to hit approve and deploy, and we will kick off yet another pipeline. <clears throat> While this happened too, in addition to um, <clears throat> getting the notification here in GitHub Actions, I also received an email, and I could have clicked on the link from the email to, to accomplish the same task. So I'm going to click on the pipeline now. We can see that we're installing some Python modules. We are committing the changes to UAT, so that's where we're actually doing our cherry pick commit. We're getting the uh, the UAT commit hash from the cherry pick commit. Then we're logging in to the IDMC UAT org. And now, just like we did in development, we're going to execute a test in our UAT org to verify that our deployment was successful. So I'm going to go back to our IDMC screen, and I'm going to log out of, of my development account and log in as my, as my uh, UAT uh, DevOps user.
So once we're logged in, I want to go ahead and click on monitor because I want to see that the uh, mapping task that is being executed by the API was successful. We can see it was successful again. It's 1244 and it processed 1,332 records. If I go back, we can see that it's still running the test. So essentially what it's doing right now is it's just waiting to pull the API again to verify that the mapping task was successful. As soon as it's successful, it's going to complete this process, which it just did now. Now, we just need to verify that the changes from development made it into our UAT environment. So we'll go back to IDMC and we're gonna to go to the chiclet selector. I'm going to click on data integration from the monitor. And then we'll go back into Explore and we'll go into our same folder, our Informatica World 2022. We can see that the mapping task was updated on 1244 p.m. If I click on the mapping task and I scroll down to where the number of maximum log files is, we can see that it was set to 33. So that is how our process works. Again, you can set up your YAML file to, to operate how you want to operate. So if you want more manual steps, for example, if you wanted to do the cherry pick commit yourself, or if you want to do the pulls by yourself, you know, as a, as a, uh, as a DevOps resource, you can do that. But our recommendation is try to automate as much as possible. And the, the key being the more that you automate, the less time your developers and, and data engineers have to spend on deployment and the more time they can spend on engineering and development. Thank you for your time.